Hi, uh, my name is Nikki. Uh, I'm with uh, Champlain Valley Democratic Socialists of America. Uh, and we're out here today um, to help support RAD um, in their effort to help uh, spread awareness about upcoming things people can vote on. Um, I've uh, particularly worked on their efforts with uh, uh, Just Cause Eviction, uh, which improves renters' rights a lot in the state and where people can vote on it. Um, and I encourage folks to uh, help uh, you know, get the word out and get involved. I'm Joseph Moore. I live in Montpelier, and I'm here today in Battery Park in Burlington for the houses, uh, Housing Justice Rally. Um, and I'm here because I support uh, some of the policies that Rights and Democracy is advocating, including just cause eviction. So right now in Vermont, we have no cause eviction, which means that landlord can evict a tenant for any reason or no reason at all. Um, just cause eviction would mean that landlords would have to have a justified reason for um, evicting a tenant, like they're not paying their rent or they're violating their lease or they're violating the law. Um, so that's one important protection for tenants. Um, the other policy that I feel really strongly about is a rental registry, a statewide registry that tracks um, who owns what in Vermont so that um, policymakers have a better picture of the housing market and are better able to regulate the housing market. Hi, I'm Stella. I'm co-chair of UVM YDSA. This past spring, we spent months canvassing outside in um, very, very dangerous conditions. I had seen a lot of um, housing with very steep stairs, covered in snow, not safe for anyone to live in. The students face an incredible housing crisis where we end up having not been able to find housing until very close to the semester starting. I've seen a lot of this. We've had RAs that end up losing their jobs and have to find housing once they lose it and it's awful. We need to fix the housing crisis here in Burlington. Um, as a DSA member, housing is a human right. Promote just cause eviction. This should be passed in the state legislature and yeah, thank you. I want to talk to you all about why we're here on this beautiful Vermont sunny afternoon. I want to talk to you about why so many of us find ourselves spending 30, 40, 50 percent of our paycheck on rent. About why that, pay, that, why that rent check only ever seems to go up and yet the houses that we live in are falling down. About why it feels like the bad landlords out there seem to operate with no oversight, no risk of punishment if they break the law. And if you have the audacity to claim it is you not them, it is you that is saddled with the consequences. It is you that finds yourself being evicted, it is you that has to scramble to get another apartment, it is you that has to turn your life upside down as you have to schlep all your possessions to yet another drafty, mouldy apartment and have to deal with yet another shady, absentee landlord, hoping beyond hope that maybe this time it's one of the good ones. And there are good ones out there, folks, but they're getting increasingly fewer and far between. There are three main reasons that the bad landlords here in Vermont can operate with impunity. The first is the most obvious. We simply do not have enough housing. This means there is very little competition for landlords as where else can you go? It means it's going to be very hard and very expensive if you ever want to buy a home. Because there's no homes available. And when you do finally find, find something that you might possibly be able to buy, someone is snatched it up within days of it being on the market, in cash, 10, 20% above the asking price. The second reason we have landlords operating with impunity is because of no cause eviction. No cause eviction means that your landlord, for any reason whatsoever, can ask you to leave your home with as little as 60 days notice. But yeah, let's get rid of it. Let's make sure that if you are a good renter, if you are someone who pays your rent on time, if you look after your property, if you're courteous to your neighbors, you should not be able to get evicted with impunity. And it's because of that landlords can get away with these shady practices. It's because of that landlords can say that if their tenant is complaining about mold or a drafty apartment or harassment, they can get rid of them and just call them a problematic tenant. How many among us have not 
told our landlord about some issue that they have because you're worried you get evicted. Show of hands, if you've not told your landlord. Yeah, quite a lot of people, me included. In fact, my old roommate's right over here. We got evicted in the last place that we lived in because our pipes burst in the bathroom. This bathroom was right over our kitchen, and so we're having debris and dust and hundred-year-old bits of house falling into our skillet every time we were cooking. We had the audacity to complain about this. And guess what happened next? Well, we weren't given a lease renewal, and we had to go find ourselves another apartment. And this is a place we were paying $1,000 per room per month in. This is a triplex where this landlord was getting eight grand a month for. And this is what no cause eviction does. This is what allows landlords to act without impunity. The last thing that we need in order to stop landlords from acting without impunity, bad landlords, is a rental registry. Right now we have little to no oversight of what is a very important, very basic consumptive product. We have housing, something that every single one of us needs. We all need shelter. And yet this industry has basically no oversight. We don't know who the landlords are in Vermont and we do not know where those homes are. And as a result, bad landlords can keep on acting without any consequences, even if they continue to show time and time again that they are bad actors. We're talking about the Boves, we're talking about the Handies, we're talking about Lucky in Montpelier. All these folks are able to continue making money hand over fist at the expense of their tenants. So those are the three things we need. We need more housing, we need just cause eviction, and we need a rental registry. Today we're going to hear, thank you. Today we're going to hear from some tenants, from some homeowners and some politicians who are going to talk to us about what happens when we allow this industry to go unregulated and the very human suffering that happens. We're going to hear about what problems occur when we're going, and we're going to hear about the solutions to them and what we can as citizens, as Vermonters can do to make sure this happens no longer. Thank you for being here today. This is your first step on a pathway to better homes, better communities, better lives, and a better Vermont. We have volunteers in the crowd that would love to talk to you. Please be nice to them, and they are the best people, and they want to hear your story. Without further ado, I present our first speaker of the afternoon, a superstar volunteer, a union organizer, a good friend. Please give it up for Joe Moore. Thanks, Tom. Good to see so many of you out here this afternoon. Uh, as Tom said, my name is Joe Moore, and I live in Montpelier. I was one of several people who organized with Rights and Democracy to get Just Cause Eviction on the ballot in Montpelier last town meeting day. And guess what? It passed with 58% of the vote. Imagine that. Almost every time this question is put to Vermonters, it passes. And yet, our legislators in the State House are holding these just cause eviction ordinances hostage. I am, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be a homeowner, but like many homeowners, I was a renter for many years, most of my adult life, in fact. And that's how I know that the landlord-tenant relationship is one of unequal power. Your landlord effectively has the legal authority to revoke your access to shelter. And this power differential is compounded by the fact, as Tom said, that Vermont currently has the second lowest rental vacancy rate in the United States. So Vermonters who lose access to housing have very few alternatives. So as I said, I live in Montpelier, and historic flooding this year and last year has exacerbated the housing shortage in our state. Last year's flooding alone damaged more than 4,000 residential properties and rendered over 700 properties uninhabitable, displacing thousands of Vermonters. And the flooding has disproportionately impacted low-income areas because land is often cheaper in floodplains for obvious reasons, and low-income residents do not have the means to move to larger plots uphill, as many more affluent Vermonters have done in recent years. 
And this dynamic has reduced the state's affordable rental stock even further. Low vacancy contributes to higher rents. More than half of Vermont tenants pay in excess of one third of their income in rent, classifying them as rent burdened. This has pushed Vermont's homelessness rate to be second highest in the US, according to the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, right behind New York. To reverse these trends, we need to prioritize safe, stable, and affordable housing for all. This means, first and foremost, ending no-cause evictions in Vermont so that no person is forced to leave their home without justification. And you're going to hear from some folks today who have first-hand experience of being no-cause evicted. A statewide just cause eviction law would protect Vermonters from arbitrary, retaliatory, and discriminatory evictions while still allowing the good landlords to remove problematic tenants. Housing discrimination on the basis of race, disability, and gender identity happens even in small, quote unquote, progressive communities like where I live in Montpelier. Federal and state laws exist to protect tenants from discrimination. However, no cause eviction makes enforcement of those anti-discrimination laws difficult because it means that the burden is on the tenant to prove discrimination rather than on the landlord to prove that an eviction was not discriminatory. Just cause eviction places the burden of proof on the landlord where it belongs. Safe, stable, and affordable housing for all Vermonters also requires a statewide rental registry to increase transparency and accountability in our state's rental market. A rental registry is based on a very simple concept. Here it is. In order to properly regulate something, you need to have basic information about it. You need to know who owns what and where. Registries give officials a better sense of their community's housing stock, empowering them to better manage code enforcement, tenant protections, and the implementation of weatherization programs, for example. Vermont has a statewide rental health and safety code, but ensuring compliance with the code is very difficult to do without an accurate picture of the state's rental property inventory. A statewide registry would bring us out of the dark and provide the level of transparency needed to protect tenants and hold bad landlords accountable. And it is especially relevant now, given the impacts of flooding, a very high likelihood of future floods, and the need to ensure that flood damage rentals are being repaired and made safe for tenants. You know, we often chant the slogan, uh, housing is a human right, right? And many of you are hold, maybe holding signs that say that. But we know it's aspirational. Because housing, under capitalism, is not a right. It is a commodity that is bought, sold, and leased for profit. And if we want to make that slogan a reality, to transform housing into a guaranteed right, then we have to fight together to make that happen. And it's not going to be easy, because we are up against the organized power of real estate developers, landlords, private equity, investment bankers, and the politicians who do their bidding in Montpelier and in Washington, D.C. But when I see you out here, and I see the organizing work that organizations like RAD are doing all around our state, and I see representatives like Tanya Vihovsky and Kate Logan, who you're going to hear from later, fighting inside the State House for housing justice, it gives me hope that we can win this fight. So I look forward to a future where housing is a human right is no longer just a slogan. It is the uncontested moral framework that governs all housing laws and policies in this country. Thank you and solidarity. One more time, give it up for Joe. Okay, so before we go on to the next speaker, I want to talk to you a little bit about our rental registry and why it's so important for things like rental weatherization. Who here in the middle of winter has an electricity bill or a gas bill that's over $200? Yeah. 
Who else won us over $300? I see you at the back. Anyone over $400? I've spoken to some people like that. So we have old, drafty apartments. Landlords have no incentive to update them, to weatherize them. The reason why is because they are not the ones paying the utility bills. What we are trying to do at Rice of Democracy is implement a rental registry in part because then we can make sure we know where the landlords are and we can offer the grants and incentives and yes, sometimes sticks as well to make sure those landlords do weatherize properly and we are not the ones that are going to be on the hook for a $200, $300, $400 <laughs> utility bill come the winter or living in drafty apartments where we have to go to bed with several layers of clothes on. Okay, our next speaker, she is everything you would ever consider to be a good tenant and a good person. Prompt, polite, courteous, just the loveliest person you've ever met. She is going to let you know why that none of this matters at all when we have laws like no cause eviction. Ladies, gentlemen and friends, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a good friend of mine, an excellent activist. Give it up for Nora Arons. amazing event together today. Hi, my name is Nora and I am going to be speaking today about my experience renting in Burlington for the past several years and why I wholeheartedly believe we need housing justice. I moved to Burlington in 2014 to start college, excited to have been accepted at my first choice school. I have rented and worked in Burlington for the past eight years and graduated in 2018. During that time, I have lived in seven different apartments, including multiple managed by well-known local slumlords. An on-campus apartment, College Street, Bradley Street, Cedar Street, Colchester Avenue, Hyde Street, and now North Union. I have never moved more than two miles two whole miles, and yet, every time, I spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to rent a U-Haul truck and make a plea on social media for help to move the belongings of mine that I cannot lift by myself, or I pay a professional moving company. Since 2021, I have endured three different no-cause terminations carried out by my landlords at the time. In that time, I have also had to move on five different occasions, each experience clouded by a desperate battle to find a safe place to live close to where I worked and where my friends lived. Memories of these times in my life are punctuated by overwhelming stress and fear, as I had to simply accept that I did not have any power in the situation and could not fight to stay. It did not matter how good of a tenant I had been or how responsible of a tenant I had been. I was kicked out, discarded. I hold this all with the knowledge that I inherently maintain the privilege as a cisgender white woman because housing injustice inherently negatively affects those of minority identities to a greater degree. I can always move back home out of state with my family, no matter how much of a hassle that would be. And uh, if I were to not find suitable housing in Shenandoah County. I truly believe we need just cause eviction and tenant protections because everyone deserves safe, stable, and culturally relevant housing close by to where their natural supports exist. If I may, I ask everyone here today to take a second and consider what housing means to you. Housing is a multi-layered issue. It is an environmental justice issue. It is a healthcare issue. It provides a safe, clean, and comfortable place for people to recover from whatever the day may have brought you. 
It is stability. It provides a sense of permanency and control, which allows people to further stabilize other areas of their lives, such as employment, physical and mental health care, substance use, and more. It absolutely is something that affects us all, indirectly and directly, regardless of race, class, gender, or socioeconomic status. Unfortunately, we are now at crisis level, but we can still bounce back. All of my personal and professional experiences led me to start volunteering with Rights and Democracy Vermont just under two years ago. I have since gained a wealth of knowledge and ability, all while growing my supportive community as well, for which I will forever be grateful. I would like to humbly thank you all for listening to my story and for coming out today. We cannot lose momentum now. We all must stand up and fight back for our rights. The taken for granted norm will not change unless we all share our stories and meaningfully work for new policies that work for all renters instead of settling. We must work together in solidarity. All of you are needed to accomplish this goal regardless of how much past experience you may have in the pursuit of housing justice. I believe we are all capable of meaningful positive change. I know it is hard and I know you're tired, because I am too. But that is why I want to thank everyone who came out today. It's truly a testament to Burlington's amazing veracity and inherent sense of community. I would like to finish with one of my favorite quotes, as I think it is relevant today. Maya Angelou once said, the ache for home lives in all of us, the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. Thank you. One more time, a round of applause for Nora. It is very, very brave to tell your story up here, to make your voice heard, and it should be encouraged and supported. It is only through telling our stories that we will see change. So one last time, please give it up for Nora. Not an easy thing to do. Okay, some of you folks may have noticed by now we have volunteers mingling around the crowd, speaking to folks, getting down your details. There is two reasons why we're doing this today. The first is to get as many people to, as possible to sign physically or digitally a petition that we are gonna to send to the State House that tells them that we are demanding change. We are demanding housing justice now. The second reason is because we know each and every one of you has a story about how this crisis has affected you, either directly or indirectly. And we know that every single one of you is here today because you want to see a change in the way that we do things here in Vermont. We are getting your details so we can reach out to you in the next few days and weeks and let you know how you can make a difference and how your story can be used to make the change that we need to see. There are so many people out here canvassing today that got started in just this exact same way and now have made such a huge difference in Vermont. Our next speaker is a walking example of how when you get involved, you may, up find, may end up finding yourself at the table in a seat of power. Our next speaker, friends, is a lifelong activist, an old colleague, an old friend, it's our representative from the Old North End, Representative Kate Logan. legislators who are fighting for tenants' rights in the State House, and I'm going to talk about what that means when you don't have the numbers that you need today. But I'm also going to talk about what we need to be fighting for. Um, I entered the rental housing market as a single parent 
15 years ago, and I'm still a renter. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, a renter, I'll say in scare quotes. I'm one of only a handful of renters or people who don't own property in the Vermont General Assembly, the People's House, even though over 30% of Vermonters are renters. And many of our legislators are landlords. Um, you know, how else can you afford to work full time for five months a year in Montpelier while earning $13,000 a year with no benefits? Um, but hey, legislators are just people. Um, and too few of the people serving as statewide policymakers in Vermont know what it's like to live in rental housing as an adult and experience the devastation of no cause eviction or a drastic rent increase or even what it's like to find a place to live in a state with one of the lowest rental vacancy rates in the entire country. Um, and even if you can't, if you can find a place, often the rent is just too damn high. Of renters in Vermont, the majority are rent burdened, meaning we spend more than 30% of our income on rent, and around 30% of renters are paying over half of their monthly income on rent in Vermont. There are too few of us in the state house. So folks like Senator Tanya Bohovsky, who will be speaking in just a little bit, and I need to be organizing our colleagues in the state house, but we can't be everywhere or convince everyone all on our own. We need you to be organizing outside of the state house so that our landlord legislators and the rest of our colleagues are hearing directly from people in their districts who are struggling to make their most basic needs met an affordable place to call home, they need to hear from you directly. They need to hear your story because they've got their own experience as their guide and their landlords. At a bare minimum, the state should be enacting just cause eviction for all renters. That's right. Yes. At a bare minimum. It's such a reasonable policy, actually. Uh, we do need a rental registry. And with enough push from renters and their allies across the state, we can win just cause eviction for all of Vermont. And we need to win. And then we need to build on that win until access to safe, dignified, beautiful, affordable housing is available to every Vermonter. I consider myself extremely fortunate that I can afford my rent, and I don't have to be, I don't have to fear being evicted for no reason. How I found housing like this is a story of community organizing, both my own and others who were organizing long before I needed housing in Burlington as a single parent with a low income. I got my start in community organizing because uh, high quality childcare was just too damn expensive. I couldn't earn enough from my little startup photography business to justify paying $20,000 a year for my children to be in a childcare facility that treated them well, as well as I would treat them in Portland, Oregon. I knew I wasn't alone. So in 2005, a small group of low-income parents and I organized a childcare cooperative that gave us each 15 hours a week of free, high-quality childcare in a safe and an educational environment surrounded by caring adults who were dedicated to providing safe, a safe environment for our kids. Woo, it wasn't, yeah, thank you. Yay, love this. <laughs> it wasn't a perfect long-term solution, like I needed more childcare than 15 hours a week. But it gave me a taste for cooperatives and I was able to see how by organizing ourselves around our needs and not monetizing them, we can live more affordably and without dependency on people who are trying to make a profit off of us. I've since raised my children in a student parent child care center um, cooperative and lived in cooperative housing in Eugene, Oregon, where my total housing and child care expenses maxed out at $800 a month. When I moved to Vermont in 2013, I was shocked and, and devastated by how much it costs to live here compared to how much you earn, and it's only gotten worse since then. Um, it took me three years to find housing I could afford. At first, I paid twice as much as I could afford, 
And then I found a place that I could afford, but it was basically like an attic in a house in Winooski that I shared with my two small children. It was beautiful. It was amazing. Um, I found that there was almost no self-organized cooperative housing in Vermont and that what there was didn't fit my needs as a parent. But I also quickly found information about the Champlain Housing Trust sponsored network of housing cooperatives in Burlington. If you don't know about Champlain Housing Trust history, I recommend you learn about it. The housing trust model that exists in Vermont is a, leg is a legacy and result of a long history of community organizing around housing that probably first was successful in the rural South, organized by former slaves living in the Jim Crow era. In Burlington, the housing trust is the result of people organizing around housing in the Sanders mayoral era. For all the criticisms of CHT that you might have heard, I believe that organizations like this are essential to solving our housing crisis for the long term, and housing developments like the one that I live in are what I'd personally like to see more of. Regardless of who the president or the governor or the mayor are, this community organization can continue to operate in its mission to provide affordable housing to our community. We need to be sure that CHT and other housing trusts around Vermont are meeting our needs though. So back to where I live. Some of the CHT sponsored housing co-ops were started independently and joined the CHT sponsorship network later, but many of those were actively developed as a nonprofit partnership between affordable housing developers, financers, and the people who would be renting in those co-ops. These developments use the same public funding that private for-profit developers can use to build affordable housing units. But private developers most often use those funds to get a massive tax break on their more expensive rental units so they can maximize their profits. And they do everything they can to convert those units to market rate as quickly as they can. The CHG co-ops, though, um, are built to remain permanently affordable. I was lucky. I was looking for cooperative housing at a moment when CHT was developing its first new co-op in 40 years, the Bright Street Housing Co-op. I was on the founding board of directors and wrote many of the policies that govern our housing community today, and I moved in the first week it opened in September 2016, and I've lived there ever since, up in the old North End. Even though I call myself a renter, I live in a place where I don't have a landlord. I'm a member of a nonprofit housing cooperative and we make our own rules. If someone gets evicted, and it does happen, it's happened, um, it's only after member, the member elected board of directors, entirely made of co-op members, exhaust every possible route to keep that household housed in our co-op. Co but sometimes, you know, it doesn't work, it's a relationship. <laughs> um, and, and we all uh, uh, need affordable housing too. So I'll never pay more, but there, I'll never pay more than 30% of my income on rent at the Bright Street Co-op. I'll never get kicked out because my landlord wants to rent to someone who makes more money than me or sell the property. I'm also not a property owner. The partners who develop the property essentially own the property, that includes us. And when the mortgage gets paid off, the property will permanently remain as a housing cooperative it's part of the 15% of the property that Burlington now manages at, in the community land trust. I tell you this story because we can have more than just cause eviction. When we organize, we need to know where we want to end up, not just after the next win, but what are we really fighting for? I'm fighting for safe, beautiful, dignified, affordable housing for all. It starts with things like fighting for just cause eviction, but it builds to solving our most fundamental need for the right to housing. There are millions of dollars every year being put into developing more affordable housing in Vermont. I hope as a legislator that in the next session we can successfully raise taxes on the wealthiest Vermonters so that we can put even more money into, into affordable housing development. That won't happen if people aren't demanding it. We tried last session. 
with Just Cause Addiction and with taxing wealthier Vermonters to put $100 million a year more into building affordable housing in Vermont. And we lost by one vote, basically, in the Senate. And we couldn't get Just Cause Addiction over the line in the House because it is the House of Landlords. Uh, like, we need you organizing outside of the State House to bring your stories to your legislators and basically shame them <laughs> into passing just cause eviction. And we can do it for Burlington and Winooski and Montpelier, but we can do it, we can also do it for the whole state. We just, we, we can, I mean, it's just, it's common sense. It's a common sense policy. That's we should right. do it. Um, so we can also win a tax increase on the wealthiest Vermonters. We were one vote short of passing that and being able to override a governor's veto on that, and that would have put $100 million a year into building more affordable housing in Vermont. We can do that, um, but we won't. it won't happen if people aren't demanding it. There's only so much we can do inside the State House, and we need you organizing outside to get it done. And then when we win, we need to be paying attention to what happens with that money on the ground. Not all affordable housing is equal. Affordable housing can be developed by people who don't care about you and are strategically using you as an opportunity to make more money. You may not care about that if the rent is finally right. Like that, you know, I, I totally accept that. Like, that's a big improvement. But we can use that money in a better way. And we can build more housing if we use that money from the federal, state, and municipal governments to build dignified housing where renters are in control of their own lives. Thank you so much for all that you're doing to build a movement for housing as a human right. We will fight together now to protect renters in their most basic needs from bad, lab, from bad landlords. And then I hope that we can continue to fight together to build housing that meets everyone's needs. I hope to see you in the People's House soon. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me. Next speaker is someone who is here to show you that just what we can accomplish when we come together, and what it means to join this community of people that are looking to make a change in this great state. It gives me the warm and fuzzies to introduce you to a wonderful person, an A-star activist, and yes, once again a friend. Give it up for Stephanie Rattay. Good afternoon. My name is Stephanie Rite, and I live in Essex, Vermont. I'm very fortunate to have moved to Vermont in 1999. When we first, can you hear me? When we first moved to Vermont, we rented a house in the New North End and proceeded to look for a home. We had a month-to-month -month lease, which we thought was a great idea because it allowed us the flexibility to move out when we finally found a home. Unfortunately, when we did move out, giving the required notice, we were told that if we didn't leave, that we didn't leave the house the way that we found it. Thus, we had to forfeit our one month rent deposit. We were shocked. And we followed what we thought was the right process to get our money back. Well, long story short, we ended up going to small claims court and we won, only to find out that the people that we rented from had since sold the house and moved out of the state. So we had no recourse. They told us, oh, you could send a uh, police to their home in North Carolina. At that point, we gave up. Vermont has always been a vacation de destination, and with the pandemic, it became a refuge for people trying to avoid COVID-19. We have a large population of people with second homes, and as the industry and job market increased here, especially in Chittenden County, there was not enough affordable housing to keep the workers 
to have places for workers to live. I began working regularly with Rights and, Vermo Rights and Democracy on a Just Cause Eviction campaign in Montpelier. I chose to dedicate my time to this campaign because safe and affordable housing is a human right. I met wonderful volunteers who shared my passion for creating change for good. I also met many wonderful individuals who, through no fault of their own, were displaced because of the flooding. I heard many, many stories of people who were told by their landlords that they had to get out of their homes because they were not keeping them up the way they should be. One gentleman told me that him and his wife had all their possessions out on the lawn to dry out. And at that point, their landlord showed up and told them, you need to be out by the end of the month. Needless to say, the gentleman was panicked. And he was at that time staying with a friend in Montpelier, but not sure what he was going to do at the end of the month. He had a job, but without a place to live, he wasn't sure what was going to happen to him in the future. There are so many people in Vermont, through no fault of their own, do not have a safe place to live. Everyone should have a place to live that is clean, that is safe, and that they can afford. And the problem is there isn't enough housing. And so what we need to do as a group of people is figure out how can we make that happen. And like you've heard people say, speaking prior to me, we need to get the rental registry, we need to work on getting it passed at the state level. Tom and his folks before, before I joined have gotten uh, just cause eviction passed in many communities across the state, but they're just single places. To do it right, we need to do it at the state level. And unfortunately, we don't always get the cooperation of the legislature, which by the way has lots of landlords who work in the legislature because that's a part-time job and they have the means and the ability to work in the legislature, which many of us don't, do not have that. So I strongly urge everyone who believes in this cause, who feels that they can make a change, who's not even sure if they can make a change, but I can tell you with this organization and their, their methods of figuring out how to make change, I, I was kind of, I didn't know how to make that change. But once I got on board, I felt like this can really make a difference. And it's worth my time. And it's, it's, it makes, it makes at least me personally feel like I'm making a difference, that I'm contributing to the betterment of Vermont. And it made a difference in my life personally. So as long as I am able, I will continue to fight for this right. Um, and I really urge everyone here to join us and uh, I think that's all I'm going to say. Stephanie definitely undersells herself. This woman here is dedicated, she's fierce, and she can literally talk to anyone into joining our movement. So give it up for Stephanie. Okay, time to hear from you guys again. Who here has left the town they lived in or had to leave Vermont for a time because they couldn't find housing? Show of hands. Just the one? Who's two? There's got to be more. Has anyone ever had to like take a substandard house somewhere on the outskirts of town because they couldn't find anywhere? Yeah. We just don't have enough houses. You're not alone. There's so many of us. 
And there is so much strength in talking about this openly and honestly. Okay, who has been worried about housing, either financially or because you thought you were going to be evicted and it affected the rest of your life, be it your job or relationships or trying to hide your fear from your kids or loved ones? Yeah, a lot more hands. A lot of people don't know where they're not going to be able to pay the rent. A lot of people don't know where they're going to live when they get that eviction notice or says that you got a notice of non-renewal. Friends, housing is fundamental. Housing is a human right and to be part of a society a community that contributes to the common good. If you pay taxes, if you support your neighbours, if you participate in your community, our government should make sure there are rules and regulations that ensure that if you play by the rules, you get stable housing. Our next speaker today comes from the Mayor's office. When we started these campaigns, Emma Mulvaney Stanek offered advice, guidance and support. This support held as Emma took office in the Vermont State House where she was an organising force to ensure that the Burlington Just Cause Eviction Charter Change made it to the governor's desk and through the relative relevant committees. She is now mayor, thank God, and she is going to make sure this critical piece of tenant protection policy, a policy that has been democratically approved by the people of Burlington and Winooski and Essex and Montpelier, successfully makes its way past the governor Scott's desk and back to the city council for implementation. To talk more about this, please welcome from the Mayor's office, Joe McGee. Good afternoon, everybody. As Tom said, my name is Joe McGee and I am Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanix, Deputy Chief of Staff. Uh, Emma was not able to be here today. She is on a, a well deserved vacation uh, as we just wrapped our first four months in the Mayor's office here in Burlington. Uh, I am really grateful to be here in solidarity with you all today uh, as we all continue to organize and work to realize housing is a human right here in Burlington and here in Vermont. This work is important now more than ever. Last month it was reported that 319 people are living unsheltered in Chittenden County. And as the state's motel program continues to become more restricted, even more families will lose the modicum of stability that they've had through that program over the last several months. And we also know that many more of our neighbors face housing insecurity, uh, not sure if they're gonna be able to pay their rent or if they're gonna be able to find a home to be able to stay in the place that they call home. Here in Burlington, we have attempted to stop the most harmful impacts of unsheltered homelessness by providing some level of basic needs for folks who have no other option but to sleep in a tent. And we are actively working this summer and into the fall to expand access to low barrier shelter to somehow bridge the gap and support folks who are living unsheltered right now. Now these efforts are important and they help reduce the most harmful impacts, but they are band-aids on a broken system and that is not housing justice. Housing justice is ensuring that everyone has a home and one that is clean, safe, and affordable. Housing justice is enacting just cause eviction and implementing other renter protections like rent stabilization. And that is something that uh, the mayor cares very deeply about and we will continue to work on in the mayor's office. And while uh, today is focused on housing, we can't have this conversation without connecting this work to the struggles of economic, climate, and racial justice as well. Housing is economic justice because people should not be paying disproportionate amounts of their income for rent each month. Housing justice is climate justice because everyone deserves to live in a walkable, bikeable, affordable, and climate resilient community. And that is something that we're working on here in Burlington as well. Housing justice is racial justice because BIPOC families deserve equitable housing free from discrimination. Now we're all here today because we're fed up. Rent is too high, wages are too low, housing is out of reach, and the units that are available are either too expensive or not kept up to minimum standards. We're also here because this movement for justice is gaining momentum and there is joy in the work when we do it together. And I think that is something that is core to rights and democracy, the work that you all have been doing, organizing, getting just cause eviction passed in so many communities and doing that organizing work in the legislature. There is joy in this work when we do it together and I'm very confident that through this work, through this building movement, we will get these policy changes done 
And I'm just very grateful to be here with you all today, so thank you very much. One more time, give it up for Joe. Okay, we're now getting to the business end of the day, and what can we do and how can we do it end of the day? To kick this section off, I can think of no one better to demonstrate just what this looks like, a living embodiment of what a combination of righteous anger and incredible activism can do. This woman went from community rabble rouser to state rep to state senator, and she is just getting started. Our uh, number one advocate for what is right in the Senate, and dare say I, the whole of the State House, please give your loudest applause, who and holler, shout for the woman on the inside, Central Chittenden Senator Tanya Vihovsky. Hello, and thank you so much for being here. So during my time in the State House, it's definitely been hard, but one of the things I have seen is that my voice matters, and even more, your voice matters. When I'm in committee, or I'm sitting in the chamber, and I'm asking questions that are based on my own life experience that no one else in the room has considered because they haven't experienced it, it's tough to be there all alone. But what I know is I'm actually not all alone, because all of you are there with me. You are there with me with your letters and your emails and showing up to say this isn't right. As one of only two renters in the Senate and the only renter that doesn't rent from my own family, I have fought really hard for renters' rights and tenants' protection. And all too often, I have been that lonely voice of opposition, that lonely voice saying this isn't right, this should be different. And that has been when we were talking about just cause eviction charter changes. That has been when we were talking about cutting housing subsidies or ending emergency housing. And it can be really demoralizing. I don't come to the table with a list of landlords and power brokers behind me, but I have the powers of the grassroots networks and supporters and my own experience. And the fight for me is so much more real because I know that the people relying on me can't simply wait until next year. I have brought your organizing to the State House with me in an inside-outside strategy that has won fights that seasoned lawmakers told me were impossible. The insight and connection has made a huge difference when it came time to fight for ballot measures that our communities have passed for just cause eviction charter changes. When we took that charter change up, first of all, it took a year of advocacy to get that charter change off the wall in my committee. And then what I heard was that we were going to have a couple hour long hearing and we would hear from the Commissioner of Housing and we would hear from DCF Economic Services. We didn't have the votes to pass it anyway, so that would just be that. It was going to be a pro forma hearing where we heard from the same old people who had never experienced what we know most Vermonters experience, unaffordable housing, fear that they might be evicted. Look, I'm afraid that I could be evicted for being too loud in my advocacy, but I'm not going to be silenced because I represent the majority of Vermonters who live with that fear every day. And so I said, no, that's not what we're going to do. We are gonna spend the weeks on the issue that this deserves. We are going to hear from the people who have been evicted for no cause and the impact that has had on their life and the discriminatory practices that landlords are able to engage in because they can evict for someone for no cause. And when I asked a big landlord what the cure to a no cause eviction was, she very clearly stated, there isn't one, they just have to leave. You see, if someone's proceeding with eviction because you can't pay rent, there's a cure for that. We can work with community partners to help you pay your back rent and you don't get evicted. If someone is being evicted because there has been a lease violation, there's a cure for that. We can fix that lease liability violation and you don't get evicted and there's a process that the landlord has to go to to prove that those things have happened but in a no cause eviction there is no cure there doesn't need to be a reason you just have to leave and when i was able to get her to admit that on the record she didn't want to what i knew was we had to keep fighting and from there i made sure that we heard from one of our own house members who had been no cause evicted. I made sure that we heard from someone who had been evicted for asking for accommodations for their disability because I knew my colleagues had to put a real human face to the damage that our inaction was causing. A lot of times we talk about the impacts of the policies we make. 
But I think all too often we don't talk about the impacts of the policies we don't make. And this is a perfect example of that. All across Vermont, people are in a housing crisis. We have less than 1% vacancy rates in Chittenden County. If someone is evicted, they have nowhere to go. So, all of this, we did not, we did pass that charter change out of committee. The governor vetoed it, and unfortunately, we were not able to override the veto by one vote. Since then, communities across Vermont have organized to pass just cause eviction charter changes, and they have sat and died on the wall in house government operations. This is where I need you. I need you to go and see who is on that committee. Are they my representative? Do I know someone who's their representative? And I need you to reach out and tell them that this is important. This is important to most Vermonters. That first Burlington Charter change passed in 2021. The housing crisis hasn't gotten better. In fact, I'd argue it's gotten much worse. We need inboxes full of stories. We need to make sure that we move this discussion forward. And we need to make sure that it is not just towns that are passing charter changes because that's a lot of organizing too. We need statewide just cause eviction. My time in office has really shown me that things are actually set up there not to work for people like me, and they were actually never meant to. And for too long, I think we've re referred to these systems as broken, when in fact they're working exactly as they were designed to. They're working for the people they're meant to protect, while more and more of us get left behind. And it's been painful to learn that even as a senator, I'm often standing alone inside the building fighting for everyday people who are struggling under those oppressive systems. I'm, what I do know, though, is that I'm always going to do it, even if I'm alone. Because, as I said before, I'm actually not really alone. I remember in my first year, as a brand new legislator, I don't believe I'd been in office for more than six weeks, and a plan came down from leadership to gut the state employee and teacher pensions. It was a done deal. They were moving forward with it. And I stood up initially alone and said, this is wrong. And then I contacted my teachers union friends and my state workers union friends and we rallied together with that inside outside strategy and we killed that plan in nine days. <laughs> It can be done, it has to be done, and we have to do it for all of you and for making space so you can join me, whether it's officially in the State House or whether it's outside the State House. Because being one of the few renting and working class senators comes with stress, and I'm always at greater risk because I don't have the security of owning my own home and could be evicted for my advocacy. This fear, knowing this fear firsthand, though, doesn't make me weaker. It makes me stronger. It's what fuels my fight for the people in a different way than some of my colleagues who know it's the right thing to do, but their rights aren't on the line. I'm not just standing up for what is right and able to go home and live comfortably. There are 30 of us in the Senate. One vote can make a huge difference. I've seen more than one thing, one change on the floor, by one vote, or two, win or lose, by one vote. So I've taken my strategies of organizing the community to try to organize my fellow senators so that we build power within the Senate amongst like-minded people to be able to deliver for Vermonters. One instance of that was in our housing bill this year. I was able to advocate and get the required 16 votes for a just cause eviction moratorium in towns that had passed their charters. Unfortunately, there was nefariousness behind the scenes that ended, this was a 270 page bill and at the last minute someone claimed that my amendment was not germane to the bill. Without proper time to read through every word of the bill and the inappropriate keywords used in the bill, it was ruled that they were right and so my amendment was not allowed to move forward. After the fact, when I challenged that, I was told that in fact I was right, it was germane to the bill, but it was too late. What I did get in that bill though was changes to the Tenant Landlord Law Commission. Initially that was a pretty, it was a commission meant to bring us back in 2025 suggestions for how to strengthen protections for tenants and build better tenant landlord laws. 
Um, and there were no parameters originally on who could be put on that commission. It was two senators, two House members, and a bunch of people um, appointed by community partners who were named. That was it. The amendment I did get through was an amendment limiting that commission to no more than 50% landlords. The members from... The members from the House and Senate may not all come from the same party and may not all be landlords. And, and this is what I actually think is the most critically important, one of those community appointees must be someone who has experienced eviction personally. Because the landlords and people in power are not gonna fix this for us because they decide to stop exploiting us. They're gonna fix it because we make it too uncomfortable for them not to be. In a shocking twist of events that I certainly wasn't expecting, because frankly I've been an enormous pain in the ass about this for leadership, I was named to that commission. So I will be one of two senators on that commission and we will begin meeting in the fall to navigate what do we do going forward to protect our tenants, to build better laws. And I get a seat at the table, which I fought really hard for, but it's not just my seat, it's actually all of your seats. And what I need from you is to share your stories with me and, if, and tell me, do you want to come testify to that commission? Because I know both from my personal experience, my work as a social worker, my work as a community organizer, that the people who are closest to the problem know damn well how to fix it and usually have the least access to power. I clawed my way into a position of power and I want to share that with all of you. I want to partner with you to make sure that we make it too uncomfortable for landlords and property owners and corporate developers to keep exploiting us. And with that, I want to turn it over to whomever is next and thank you for being here and remind you that actually you have the power. So take it. Thank you, Tanya. Always here to deliver a bomb burner. We cannot thank you enough for your activism and your advocacy. Give it up one more time for Tanya Bohofsky. Okay, you've now heard about the housing, how the housing crisis affects us. You have heard about the policies we need in place to bring justice and equality to our great state. And we've even heard a little bit about what it means to be part of this community of activists and what we can achieve together. What we have not heard is what to do next. What can we, as renters, as homeowners, hell, even as good landlords, and I know there's a couple in the crowd today, who are good landlords and do stand with us and try and help us pass these important policies. How do we level the playing field to bring about this justice and to be heard by the legislature? For the past three years, we've already done some great organizing. In 2021, we passed Just Cause Eviction Policy right here in Burlington. In 2023, we passed the same policy in Essex and Winooski, and in 2024, we passed it once again in Montpelier. We have democratically decided we want just cause eviction, and are now waiting for it to be approved by the legislature. A policy that will immediately make a difference to the thousands of people that rent in those four cities. We have also been advocating for a rental registry and rental weatherization. We are currently working with our partners in the Energy Action Network to bring rental weatherization to every tenant in Vermont and provide incentives and grants to landlords to ensure that they put the improvements needed to bring their properties up to a livable condition. We have been doing the work, but there is plenty still to go. This is where all of you come in. In three weeks' time, as Tanya has already spoken about, a select group of people will come together, commissioned by the state government, to review current landlord-tenant law and what, if anything, can improve or modernize it. They are set to give that report to the State House in December. Now we already know, right here, what needs to be done to improve or modernize it, right? We need just cause eviction laws and we need oversight in the form of a rental registry. We at Rise and Democracy are bringing together people like you to make sure our voices are heard when this group comes together and discusses what laws need to be changed. We need you to join with us and make sure that we are listened to, that our experiences are heard and not just the landlord class and the country club class that decide on how to change these tenant landlord laws. We as a group, as a collective, need to get organized and we need to get smart. 
With Rights of Democracy, you will join a group that is ready, willing, able, and capable to be heard, to be strong, and to work in our collective interest. Over the next few days and weeks, we'll be reaching out to you to talk about what joining our ranks means, what standing up and being counted looks like in whatever capacity you are able to do so. And we hope when we call, you do answer, and together we will be heard. Thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate every single last one of you. Before I go and let you get some delicious free food provided to us, courtesy of the People's Kitchen. Thank you, big shout out to the People's Kitchen. I also want all of you to give one last round of applause to all of our amazing speakers today. It's not easy to come up here. A huge round of applause to every volunteer that helped make this rally happen today. Put your hands up, volunteers. You're fantastic. Let's hear it for them. And finally, a big round of applause to yourselves. Here is, being here is half the battle. And for some of you, hopefully all of you, this is the first step on an incredible journey where you will discover how joining in collective action can change your life and change the world. So please, one last round of applause for yourselves. Thank you for being here. And one final request before you all go and get some food. Can everyone please come up here so we can get one picture of everyone on the stage. We'll get the banners, grab yourself a, grab yourself a, a sign, come on up here, and let's, uh, let's get a group photo. Hi, I'm April, I'm with Burlington Tenants United. We're a group of tenants in Burlington who organize together for collective bargaining power with our landlord. Just like how workers have a union, tenants, we gotta have a union too. And just like how workers can have a labor strike, we could have a rent strike. If we come together and we organize enough, we could all withhold our rent. And that is the power that we have over landlords. Landlords depend on us to pay the rent. And we have the power to withhold that as long as we are organized enough. So that's what we're all about at Burlington Tenants United. Hi, I'm Dan Blau. I'm here at the Housing Justice Now rally where they're working on community organizing to improve the state of housing in Vermont. We want things like um, more affordable housing, more community-based housing, um, more rights for tenants, and I think those are really important issues. Um, I happen to be neighbors with Tom, the organizer, and he handed me a flyer and said, you should come to this. And so I came, and got to listen to some of our politicians, I think, who are like-minded, talk about really important issues. So it was a nice chance to um, learn about some of these issues affecting our fellow Vermonters, and I'm really glad I came. Hi, my name is Trey Cook. I'm one of the co-chairs of University of Vermont Young Democratic Socialists of America. Um, I'm here today at the end of the housing justice rally at Battery Park. Um, I think it was a great event. It called attention to many of the issues facing uh, working Vermonters uh, as far as housing goes. Uh, for too long, the city has put a lot of value on the speculative market of reselling like single family homes. Uh, what we need is big, dense, available social housing. Uh, as long as housing is something that people can speculate and profit off of, I don't think that we'll have our basic needs met. Uh, and I appreciate the comments of Senator Tanya uh, and all of the work that she's doing to build more social housing. Accessibility to a home. And we all are just human beings coming together to celebrate on a beautiful day and make everybody understand that there is a face, a human face, to this immediate problem. We're the second highest state to have this issue behind the state of New York. And that amazes other people when they hear that throughout the United States. I am that human face. And my name is Ronnie Little. Thank you for having me here today. Give yourself one last round of applause, thank you for being here. Go get yourself some free food. You've been wonderful.